Greetings, mother factors. My name is Sam, and today I'll be teaching all you landlubbers about the many mysteries of the ocean. The big wet thing that has us completely surrounded and threatens to seriously do us in unless we start treating it better has fascinated humanity since time immemorial, because it is indeed fascinating. But how can you have a lake underwater? How did thousands of rubber ducks help science? And where the hell is Atlantis anyway? I want to go there on my next holiday. It seems cheaper than center parks anyway. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so get on your life jackets, breathe in that salty sea air, and prepare to get a little moist as we count up 101 facts about the ocean. Number one. What technically is an ocean? An ocean is a large body of salty water that comprises a large portion of the hydrosphere. What's a hydrosphere? No, not a shimmering orb of magical water capable of reading minds that I write about in my self-published series of fantasy novels. The hydrosphere is basically just all the water, like all the water everywhere in, on, and above the surface of the Earth. Number two. So what's the difference between the ocean and the sea? Technically, the sea is a section of ocean that is partially enclosed by areas of land. For example, the North Sea here is part of the Atlantic Ocean but it's surrounded in part by the eastern side of Britain and large parts of continental Europe. Geography is fun, kids. Number three. The word ocean comes from the name of the Titan god Oceanus, who was the elder of the Titans in classical Greek mythology. The ancient Greeks and Romans considered Oceanus to be the divine personification of a gigantic river that encircled the world. A quick look at Google Earth will tell you that this is complete nonsense, and the ancient Greeks and Romans were lying to you. Although I'm sure B.O.B. probably believes that too. Number 4. A whopping 97% of the hydrosphere is made up of oceans. Of all the remaining water, the vast majority is frozen and locked in glaciers. All the water contained in all the lakes and rivers on Earth makes up a minuscule 0.3% of all water on the planet. Number 5. Approximately 361 million square kilometers of the planet is covered by ocean. This is equivalent to roughly 75% of the Earth's surface. Number six. The total volume of, well, water, like all the water ever, is approximately 1.35 billion cubic kilometers. Unfortunately, that's far too large for the puny brain to even conceptualize. So think of it this way. There's enough water in the world's oceans to fill a cube with edges over 1,000 kilometers in length. Still too overwhelmingly large to conceive in your puny puny minds? Well, tough luck, because I'm all out of helpful visualizations, I'm afraid. Number seven. That being said, despite how vast the oceans may seem, they're still relatively small in comparison to the overall size of planet Earth. For instance, if the Burj Dubai, aka the world's tallest building at 829 meters high, were equal to the distance from the center of the Earth to the surface, the average depth of the world's oceans would equate to a mere 10 centimeters extra on top. In fact, the oceans constitute only 0.023% of planet Earth's total mass. Number eight. But the main thing to take away here is that much like Cersei Lannister's dating life, it's all relative. Though the oceans constitute only a minuscule part of the planet's total mass, just the top 10 meters of the ocean is equal in mass to the entirety of the planet's atmosphere. Number nine. Likewise, just the top three meters of the world's oceans hold the same amount of heat as our entire atmosphere. No way, that can't be right. The sea in Felixstowe is freezing. Number 10. Also likewise, the top 2.5 centimetres, or top inch if you like inches, of the Earth's oceans contains the same amount of water as the entire atmosphere. What we're saying here is the liquids are more dense than gases, guys, I, I think. Hey, I'm not a scientist. If you are, let us know in the comments below. Number 11. As I'm sure you are already aware, the oceans aren't perfectly flat reflection pools, but are ever-changing, churny, bumpy messes. That's why your reflection looks so screwy when you look into it. These perturbations on the surface of the oceans are commonly known as waves, and are caused by wind. These waves, known specifically as wind-generated waves in a scientific context, can range from tiny ripples to huge waves up to 30 meters high. Surf's up, dude! Carabunga! Oh, I hate myself. Number 12. Conventionally, all the liquid water found sloshing around, not in, on, or above land, is split into five distinct oceans, the Pacific, the Atlantic, the Indian, the Arctic, and the Southern Oceans. Collectively, these large areas of ocean are known as the World Ocean. Number 13. However, the number of oceans can actually vary depending on who you ask. The Arctic and Southern Oceans are often subsumed into others. 
reducing the number of oceans on Earth to four or even just three. Number 14. Despite the fact that oceans are all around us, much like love, and that humans have been whizzing around on the surface like absolute maniacs for thousands of years, oceanographers are keen to point out that less than 5% of the world ocean has actually been explored. This is mostly due to the fact that humans find it very difficult, some might say impossible, to breathe when submerged in water. Number 15. That being said, satellite imagery has enabled us to map almost 100% of the Earth's ocean floor, but only to a resolution of around 5 kilometers. It's like a really terrible camera. Only a tiny proportion, less than 0.05% of the ocean floor, has been mapped to the degree of detail required to detect submerged items like shipwrecks or airplane wreckage. Or bury treasure. R. Oh, I'm doing it again. Number 16. The actual origin of the Earth's oceans isn't particularly well understood, mostly because they are thought to have been formed all the way back in the Hadean Eon, which is like the, the first eon. The Hadean Eon began around 4.6 billion years ago with the formation of the Earth, Good times. And at some point within the next 600 million years, the place got absolutely flooded. I bet someone left a tap on. Happens more often than you think. Number 17. Oceanic life forms, like these guys here, arrived roughly 3 billion years ago, which is way, way sooner than the lazy terrestrial life forms, which turned up only 400 million years ago. Glad you can make it, land animals. Pfft. Number 18. As far as we know, Earth is the only planet in the entire frickin' universe with oceans made up of liquid water. Although there is some evidence of large stable bodies of water existing elsewhere in the solar system, the sheer vastness of the universe makes it likely that oceans do exist somewhere else other than Earth. Though it's only on our planet that liquid water oceans can be 100% confirmed. I mean, all we have to do is look outside, if you live by a beach. There are large bodies of liquid on Saturn's largest moon, Titan, for example, but sadly they are only mere lakes, and are made of liquid hydrocarbons rather than water. Oh, there goes my next holiday idea. Number 19. Water travels around the planet in an enormous global loop, known as thermohaline circulation or, more colloquially, the global ocean conveyor belt. It zips around the Earth via a combination of deep cold currents and shallow warm currents, in a planetary circuit that takes around 1,000 years to complete. Number 20. The world's oceans are home to approximately 230,000 known species. But because the vast majority of oceans are totally unexplored, again owing to humanity's propensity to drown really, really easily, the real number of species that exist in the ocean is likely to be much, much larger, with some estimates putting the number as high as a staggering 2 million. Number 21. So as you can imagine, the oceans are teeming with life. Honestly, it's like Croydon on a Friday night down there. In one study, scientists looking at an area of the ocean about half the size of a tennis court found almost 900 species, more than half of which were new to science. And that's science. Science knows a lot. Number 22. <laughs> Approximately 50 to 80% of all life on Earth is found in the world's oceans. It almost seems as though it's like the better place to live and we're lumbering around on land like morons. <sighs> I'm going to make myself some gills. No, no, don't do that. Just been to hospital for a long time. Dangerous, don't make gills. Oh, I'm still bleeding. Number 23. The blue whale can be found throughout the world's oceans and is notable for being the largest known animal to have ever existed on planet Earth, exceeding the size of even the largest dinosaurs. Adult blue whales have hearts the size of Volkswagens, which sounds like a particularly weird poem. And while their young are growing, they can gain roughly 90 kilograms a day, more than the average British man weighs, or as much as a chubby British man weighs. Number 24. The world's oceans are also home to the oarfish, which are the longest known species of bony fish. While the oarfish is thought to only inhabit the top 1,000 meters of the ocean, it's rarely seen at the surface, as it generally likes to live at depths with little to no current. As such, they build up very little muscle mass, leaving them unable to survive in shallower, more turbulent waters. Number 25. The fastest creature in the oceans is a bit of a toss-up, with some sources pointing to the impressive-looking sailfish, which can swim an incredible 100 meters in only 4.8 seconds, and others suggesting the fastest fish is the black marlin, which is thought to reach speeds of up to 80 miles per hour. Number 26. But enough about being the largest or the fastest, what about good old-fashioned German efficiency? Jellyfish are the ocean's most efficient swimmers, as they consume 48% less oxygen than any other swimming creature. Unfortunately, though, they're just sacks of loosely contained gelatinous goo, so, you know, swings and roundabouts. Number 27. Aquatic animals, which live at the very bottom of the ocean, known as the abyssal animals, often glow in the dark. 
Actually, that's not even that scary. I don't know why I did that. This is known as bioluminescence, and it's done to attract mates, attract prey, or even camouflage the underside of an animal to look like the lighter surface of the ocean when viewed from below. Those cheeky devils. Number 28. The deepest living fish, nicknamed the ghost fish, has been recorded at depths of 8,143 meters. Oh wait, that actually is scary this time. Um, depths of 8,143 meters. Woo. It's not that scary, it's just the ghost bit. Number 29. Giant kelp is a type of seaweed that grows at an astonishing rate to reach its usual height of 30 meters. This kelp species, known by its scientific name of Macrocystis pyrifera, can grow up to two feet in a single day. Number 30. Just one single milliliter of ocean water can contain over a million bacteria and approximately 10 million viruses. Luckily, the vast majority of them are harmless, but please don't go around drinking ocean water, kids. It's really silly. Bacteria and viruses aside, drinking salt water can be deadly. And hey, speaking of salt... Number 31. Speaking of salt... Oh, I already said that. Well, anyway, speaking of salt, just one liter of ocean water contains over 35 grams of salt. For the colonials among us, that means that one cubic foot of ocean water contains over two pounds of delicious, deadly salt. Number 32. If all the salt in the oceans were somehow removed and formed into an enormous salt cube, for which we would presumably abandon all our gods and worship as the salty saviour, said cube would have sides measuring roughly 280 kilometers or 175 miles long. So first we had an enormous cube of water and now we have a smaller but still enormous cube of salt. Frankly, guys, I think we might have been better off with the water and salt covering the surface of the planet. Just my opinion. Number 33. So why exactly are the oceans so salty, hmm? Well, the oceans become salty because the water flowing into the sea from the rivers and streams picks up dissolved salt minerals as it erodes rock and stone, which then becomes concentrated in the open ocean as the sun shines directly on the water's surface, evaporating said water. Number 34. Although regular water, you know, the kind you can find in your tap if you're lucky enough to have them, freezes at zero degrees Celsius, salty ocean water takes a little more convincing to solidify, and does not start to freeze until around minus two Celsius. Number 35. As such, roughly 12% of the oceans are covered in ice at any given time, which works out at around 7% of the planet's entire surface. These are predictably located in the Earth's polar regions, at the top and the bottom of the planet, which I doubt is the correct scientific nomical sure, but frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Number 36. If all the ice on the face of the Earth melted at once, the oceans would, after a devastating series of tsunamis and floods killing millions, if not billions of people, settle at a sea level of 66 meters higher than it currently sits. It's a good thing that the polar ice caps are only melting slowly then. Ha <laughs> but they're still melting. Number 37. While the depth of the ocean varies wildly across the planet, the average depth of the ocean is roughly four kilometers. That's roughly the same length as the entirely unrelated Hollywood Walk of Fame. And probably just the salty. Number 38. The deepest point in all the world's oceans is known as the Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench, which is located to the east of the Mariana Islands in the Western Pacific Ocean. It stretches down to a truly unsettling depth of approximately 11,000 meters. At this depth, you could sink the world's tallest mountain, Mount Everest, down to the bottom of the ocean, and you'd still have to dive down a mile just to reach the peak. Although, actually, that would make climbing it a lot easier. Number 39. Oh, God. <clears throat> Number 39. At the ocean's deepest point, which we just mentioned as the Challenger Deep, God, keep up. At this point, the water pressure is eight tons per square inch, which means that basically, if you were to go down there, it would feel like having 50 jumbo jets piled on top of you, and <laughs> who wouldn't want that? I don't know why I said that so sexily, sorry. Number 40. Remember a couple of facts ago when I said that Mount Everest was the tallest mountain on Earth? I lied, and I enjoyed doing it on an animalistic level. Mount Everest is the tallest mountain measuring from sea level. If one measures the Hawaiian mountain, Mauna Kea, from its oceanic base, it stands at over 10,000 meters high. Sadly, only 40% of the mountain is above sea level, cutting short its dreams of taking first place in the tallest mountain championships. You're winning on a technicality there, Everest. Number 41. Although good old-fashioned sunlight has many great qualities, and I'm sure it will make someone very happy one day, it can't penetrate particularly deep down into the ocean. Though sunlight entering the water may travel roughly 1,000 meters down into the ocean, there is rarely much significant light deeper than 200 meters. As such, it's kind of difficult to see. Atlantis must have some great street lamps. But also, photosynthesis cannot occur at this depth. The meaning of life. 
The largest over the conventionally demarcated oceans is the Pacific, at approximately 165 million kilometers squared. This covers around 30% of the Earth's surface, which is large enough to hold the entirety of the planet's land. And that's just one of the oceans, guys. Honestly, we mock Aquaman, but he could, you know, he could ravage us. Number 43. Unfortunately, due to the perfidious effect of plate tectonics, the entire land mass of the Americas is moving towards Asia at an alarming rate of 5 centimeters a year. Which doesn't sound much, but it means that the Pacific Ocean is technically getting smaller. <gasps> with an annual loss of one kilometer squared every two years. And as the Pacific shrinks, its evil cousin, the Atlantic Ocean, is only getting larger. Number 44. The Pacific Ocean's name comes from the Espanol Mar Pacifico, which means peaceful sea. The O at the end of Pacifico would also seem to imply that the Pacific Ocean is a boy, which I assume is why it's blue? I wouldn't know, I'm not Spanish. Number 45. It's not just underwater mountains that best their land-based rivals either. The Monterey Bay Submarine Canyon, located off the coast of Monterey Bay in sunny California, is deeper than the world-famous Grand Canyon. But guess who gets all the attention? The Land Canyon. Not on. Number 46. But it's not just about being the tallest or the deepest, it's also about being the longest. You can make your own jokes there. <clears throat> Mid-Atlantic Ridge is the longest mountain range in the world, stretching over 56,000 kilometers, making it longer than the Rockies, Himalaya, and Andes Mountains combined. But once again, who gets all the love? The Land Mountains. Are you seeing a theme developing here? Number 47. Staggeringly, we did not even begin exploring the Mid-Ocean Ridge until 1973, when a crew of seven French and American marine geologists scooted down to have a look-see in a submersible named Archimede. This is a full four years after we managed to fire some dudes onto the flippin' moon. Yep, we waited until four years after we travelled 384,400 kilometres to the moon to visit something we've been sailing over for thousands of years. Number 48. But it's not just geological features that prevail over their undeserving land-based opponents. The Gulf Stream off the Atlantic seaboard of the good old-fashioned US of A flows nearly 300 times faster than the Amazon and shifts nearly 4 billion cubic feet of water per second more than all the world's rivers combined. Number 49. In fact, the Earth's largest known waterfall is located between Greenland and Iceland and is, get this, underwater. So listen to TLC and don't go chasing waterfalls because you'll drown. Known as the Denmark Strait Cataract, this seemingly counterintuitive phenomenon is caused by temperature difference between the colder, denser water coming in from the east and the relatively warm water coming from the west, which forces the cold water to plunge down over 3,505 meters. This constitutes a drop of over three times the height of Angel Falls in Venezuela, which is the world's highest uninterrupted above-ground waterfall. Number 50. The Pacific Ocean contains approximately 25,000 different islands. Some of its greatest hits include the best-selling Hawaiian Islands, the wildly successful Galapagos Islands, and the entirety of New Zealand, which is where they filmed that movie with the little people and the wizards and whatnot. I think we did a fact video about them, but there's so many facts these days, huh? Number 51. However, it's not all fun and games in the Pacific. Surrounding the world's largest ocean is the Pacific Ring of Fire. Do, 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 do. A large area which follows a tectonic boundary, mostly around the majority of the Pacific Plate. Basically, what I'm getting at here is that there's a large number of active volcanoes there. 75% of the world's volcanoes are located here, and only three of the world's 25 largest volcanic eruptions of the last 11,700 years have occurred outside the Ring of Fire. Additionally, over 80% of the world's largest earthquakes take place in this region as well. Number 52. The Pacific also contains the Tamu Massif, which is thought to be the world's largest underwater volcano. Thankfully, it's extinct because the entire structure is almost as big as the entire country of Japan. Number 53. The Pacific is also bordered by 42 countries, as well as a number of territories belonging to several more nations. Even the UK has some real estate in the Pacific, in the form of the isolated but no doubt lovely Pitcairn Islands. Number 54. The Pacific Ocean is so massive, in fact, at its widest point, it's five times wider than the diameter of the moon. Number 55. Moving on to ocean number two, the second largest ocean on Earth is the roughly S-shaped Atlantic Ocean, which covers 21% of the Earth's surface. Number 56. The Atlantic Ocean gets its name from Atlas, a titan from Greek mythology, who was condemned to hold up the sky for all eternity by the Olympians, i.e. Zeus's mates. It's harsh. Number 57. The Bermuda Triangle is also located in the Atlantic Ocean, and is the origin of a myriad of legends about mysterious supernatural forces sinking ships and crashing and then sinking planes. 
However, the perennial buzzkill that is statistics shows us that the Bermuda Triangle has no more ship and plane disappearances than anywhere else in the oceans. Number 58. You may have also heard of the Mediterranean Sea, which is connected to the Atlantic Ocean via a little tiny stretch of water called the Strait of Gibraltar. Apparently, the Med was dry land up until around 5.33 million years ago, when the Atlantic water finally forced its way in between Europe and Africa and filled the place up. Recent studies suggest that this deluge happened within the space of only two years. Number 59. By the way, that stretch of Atlantic Ocean separating Europe and Africa is only 14 kilometers wide. Of course, this has led to discussion about whether or not to build a bridge to connect the two continents. Some have even suggested an undersea tunnel. But if a bridge were to be built, it would be roughly twice as long as the current longest bridge in the world. So, no pressure, guys. Number 60. The third largest ocean is the Indian Ocean, which covers approximately 14% of the Earth's big dumb face. In ancient Sanskrit literature, the Indian Ocean is known as Ratnakara, which means the mine of gems. Snazzy. Number 61. Though the Pacific may be the biggest and the Atlantic may be the most S-shaped, the Indian Ocean is by far the hottest. The water at its surface can sometimes exceed 30 degrees Celsius. Number 62. The fourth largest and second smallest ocean is the Southern Ocean, which surrounds Antarctica, or planet Earth's frozen arse. Number 63. As you can imagine, the water surrounding the planet's extremely cold butters is also extremely cold. So cold that some of the water starts to go all hard and crusty, which scientists apparently called Ike. Oh, ice. Uh, something. Anyway, to stop this from happening to the insides of the fish who live there, some of them have a natural antifreeze in their blood to prevent ice crystals from forming. Nintendo 64. The Coral Sea in the South Pacific is home to the world's largest living structure, the Great Barrier Reef. Measuring around 2,600 kilometers in length, the reef stretches down a huge section of Australia's eastern coast, and, unlike the Great Wall of China, can actually be seen from space. Number 65. Speaking of coral reefs, a full quarter of all marine animals live in and around coral reefs, and roughly 90% of all marine animals rely on them to some extent, so coral's important, it's not just a pretty color. Number 66. Now, perhaps you're a runaway teenage delinquent thinking, Oh yeah? What's the ocean ever done for me? While carving a pentagram into your school desk. Well, sport, approximately 70% of all the oxygen we breathe is produced by algae that lives in the ocean. So while you're under my roof, you're going to respect the hydrosphere, capiche? Number 67. The planet's oceans have been called the largest museum on Earth. Due to the fact that there are more artifacts, relics, and remnants of world history lying in the bottom of the ocean than in combined collections of all the world's museums. Including Jack, who would have made it, Rose, you just have to move your fat bum. Number 68. As such, some people estimate that there are up to $60 billion worth of sunken treasure sitting at the bottom of the world's oceans. If that doesn't sound like the pretext to a clumsily written yet undeniably enjoyable Nick Cage film, I don't know what is. Number 69. Nick Cage. The world's oceans also contain an astonishing 18 million metric tons of gold. Unfortunately, it's literally dissolved in water as tiny, almost invisible specks scattered across the planet. You know, like those gold flakes in vodka, except even smaller. The gold in oceans is so diluted that its concentration is in the order of parts per trillion. Good luck to you, Mr. Cage. Number 70. You can, however, find undissolved gold in and on the sea floor. Again though, just visiting the bottom of the ocean is extremely difficult, let alone mining down there. Minecraft would not prepare you for that. As such, there is no cost-effective way of mining for ocean gold, so it's just going to be sitting there forever. Number 71. That being said, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, estimates that if we could extract all of the gold from the world's oceans, every single person on Earth would have 4 kilograms of precious metal. This would instantly make it less precious, defeating the point entirely. Sorry to burst your bubble there, Noah, if that is your real name. Number 72. The amount of shipwrecks dotted about throughout the oceans is also staggeringly high. James Delgado, the director of Noah's Maritime Heritage Program, estimates that there may be as many as a million sunken boats and ships lying sleepily at the bottom of the ocean, the majority of which are still entirely undiscovered. The United Nations disagree with Delgado, however, as they estimate that there are as many as 3 million shipwrecks at the bottom of the oceans. Number 73. Unfortunately, an endless amount of treasure isn't the only thing that gets dropped into the ocean. It's estimated that around 6 billion kilograms of rubbish, or trash, is dumped into the ocean every year, the majority of which is plastic. Number 74. 
Humanity discards approximately three times as much rubbish into the world's oceans as the total weight of all fish caught. Some even believe that in just three decades, the weight of all discarded plastic in the ocean will exceed that of all the fish there combined. Number 75. Additionally, around 10,000 shipping containers are accidentally dropped into the ocean every year. Whoopsie. Roughly 10% of those contain toxic chemicals that then leak into the ocean. Again, oops. Number 76. In 2006, the US Army admitted that between 1944 and 1970, it had secretly dumped 32,000 tons of nerve gas agents into the ocean, as well as 400,000 chemical bombs and more than 500 tons of radioactive waste. <laughs> I mean, we've all been there. That was a joke, by the way. Literally no one else has ever been there. Number 77. If you think the pollution fact are finished, well, you've got another thing coming. And that thing is another pollution fact. And here it is. There's an ongoing increase in the acidity of Earth's oceans, which are roughly 30% more acidic than in the mid-16th century. Soon you won't even need bathing suits, they're just going to dissolve off you and everyone will see your nipples. Think of that, huh? Don't want that, do you? Number 78. It's estimated that the degree of disease and death caused by polluted coastal waters cost the global economy somewhere in the region of $13 billion a year. Number 79. In fact, humans are so awful and have polluted the ocean so egregiously, there is even an area in the North Pacific where discarded rubbish, moved around by large rotating ocean currents called gyres, has collected in an enormous swirling mass known horrifically as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, or the Pacific Trash Vortex. The polluting plastics break down into grain-sized fragments, creating a churning mass of plastic soup. The grains of plastic are often ingested by fish, and so could potentially end up on your plate, my boy or girl. Number 80. Almost a third of all the world's oil supply comes from offshore oil fields in our oceans. Some of the most popular oil drilling areas are the Gulf of Mexico, the Arabian Gulf, and the North Sea, which is, wow, that's right in our back garden in the UK. Number 81. However, smart people estimate that if we capture just 0.1%, just one tenth of 1% of the ocean's kinetic energy, the current global energy demand could be satisfied five times over. Number 82. In 1992, a container ship called the Ever Laurel was caught in a storm which resulted in 12 shipping containers going overboard. One of these contained almost 29,000 rubber bath toys, which somehow burst open, releasing its cargo into the briny depths. Turns out that every missing shipping container has a silver lining, as these escaped bath toys were then tracked by scientists, leading to discoveries that revolutionized our understanding of the ocean's currents. Number 83. A similar but less accidental case is that of Harold Hackett. Since the mid-90s, Hackett has thrown around 8,000 bottles containing messages into the ocean and has received over 4,000 responses back from all over the world, including from Africa, South America, and Europe. Hackett claims he writes back to every single response he gets. Number 84. The Atlantic Ocean is so large that if America invaded it, and let's be honest, nothing's impossible these days, every American citizen could have their own cubic kilometre. <laughs> fun. Terrifying, but fun. Number 85. Due to its irritating quality of undiscoverability, the oceans contain numerous bizarre mysteries that defy comprehension. One such head-scratcher is referred to as the bloop, an incredibly low frequency and extremely loud sound captured in 1997 by our friends over at NOAA, at a point in the South Pacific Ocean hundreds of miles off the southern coast of Chile. It's one of the loudest ocean sounds ever recorded, and nobody's quite sure what caused it, is what an incorrect person would say. Scientists in 2012 confirmed it was caused by cryosisms, or large booming noises caused by cracking ice. It's a shame, I thought it was Cthulhu, but there we go. Number 86. You may also be utterly floored by the assertion that beneath the surface of the ocean, you may find rivers and lakes. This is caused by areas of dense high salinity water settling in depressions of the ocean floor, and are known as brine pools. These pools often exhibit similar characteristics to their land-based equivalents, having clear shorelines and waves. Number 87. The point in the ocean furthest away from any land is known as Point Nemo, and lies more than 2,688 kilometers from the nearest land. The British virtual band Gorillaz claim it as their former headquarters, on an island made of rubbish called Plastic Beach. Number 88. In fact, the oceans are so large, say if you were an alien landing on Earth, completely at random, you would have around a 60% chance of landing out of sight of land. At which point you probably think it's just a swimming pool planet and drive off somewhere else and bother Venus or something. Number 89. Over 90% of trade conducted between countries is carried by large ships, some of which accidentally lose their cargo and dump thousands of rubber ducks into the oceans, which can then be used to study- Oh, wait, we've covered this already. Okay, well, yeah, oceans, crucial for business. Number 90. 
The oceans are also used to transport information. Communications companies have built and maintained enormous networks of electronic cables stretched across the ocean floor. These cables have to be incredibly durable to stop them from being chewed on by all manner of aquatic beasties. Number 91. Roughly 75% of the world's megacities, which are those with a population exceeding 10 million, are located either close to or on the coast. By 2025, it's thought that 75% of people will live in a coastal population. Again, rising sea level, guys. Number 92. The oceans can even make hotter cities that should be far colder. Seattle is often much warmer in January than more Southern American cities like Kansas or Oklahoma, because the ocean near Seattle essentially acts like a huge radiator by slowly releasing heat that's been stored up in the previous months. Number 93. The 8th of June is recognized as World Oceans Day. The day is used to emphasize the importance of the world's oceans to the global economy and promote anti-pollution efforts. It's also Tim Berners-Lee's birthday, so yeah, very important day for us all, I think. Number 94. One of the ocean's most destructive forces are tsunamis, which are caused by offshore earthquakes and can travel up to 800 kilometers per hour. They can be hard to physically see when out in the middle of the ocean, as they start off at a height of around 10 centimeters. But as they move towards the shallower waters of the shore, these massive surges of water build up to around 3 to 30 meters high, causing catastrophic destruction and loss of life. Number 95. However, even larger waves, known as internal waves, can be found beneath the surface of the ocean, reaching heights of over 240 meters high. Such waves travel deep below the ocean's surface as huge walls of water, distinguished from surrounding water by greater density, which allows them to flow and collapse like regular waves. Number 96. The surface of the ocean isn't even uniformly flat when taking the variance of waves into account. Over deep underwater canyons, the ocean is affected by local gravity, leaving depressions in the surface that could be up to 20 meters deep, spread over an area of roughly 160 kilometers wide. Number 97. The Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific Oceans are home to the bristlemouth fish, also known as lightfishes and anglemouths. A particular genus of this species, called cyclothone, is thought to be the most abundant vertebrae on Earth, numbering up to a quadrillion individuals. Luckily, they're usually smaller than the average human finger. Number 98. Owing to its numerous overseas territories and long coasts, roughly 50% of all United States territory is in the ocean. Number 99. The monsters you find on old maps of the oceans were used to indicate unexplored areas. Presumably the message was, we don't know that there are sea monsters there, but we don't not know that there are sea monsters there. Number 100. Every year, Finland gets roughly 7 kilometers squared larger as it rebounds from the compressive weight of Ice Age glaciers. Essentially, Finland is getting bigger, and quickly, as it rises out from the Atlantic Ocean. Number 101! Hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor can heat up the surrounding water to an incredible 400 degrees Celsius. It doesn't boil because of the immense pressure found at such depths. My god, it's hotter than Jennifer Lawrence down there. Actually, not really. Just joking, that's not even possible, darling, if you're watching, which I know you're not. Um, but hey, one day, she could be... Who knows? Anyway, that was 101 Facts About the Oceans. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what you want to see next. And hey, while you're at it, enjoy these two videos here. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.